Luke Damnia by John Plankham. Chapter 1, January 1st, 1994. Today is John Luke Damnia's 16th birthday, and he is watching Bram Stoker's Dracula on the VHS. John has a pale complexion, black short hair, and green eyes. He has a portergeist shirt on, with grey jeans, a black belt, and he has no shoes on. John's older brother Harry walked in, and he is holding a birthday present in his hand. Happy birthday, John, said Harry. Thank you, responded John. He grabs the birthday present, and he unwraps it. It was a disc of Super Mario Bros. Nice. Thank you, smiled John. Can we play it together? Sure. Why not? nodded Harry. John got the VHS tape of Bram Stoker's Dracula and he turned on the NES. Then he put the disc of Super Mario Bros. in. Then John and Harry play the game together. Go and get the mushroom power up while I defeat the Goombas, said Harry. Okay, John responded. John used the controls to get the mushroom power up, while Harry is using the controls to jump and stomp on the Goombas. Several hours later, the days grew darker and darker, and Harry and John finally beaten the game. Their parents came home, and they closed the front door. Hello, said Harry. Hello, Harry. Are you all right? asked the mother. Yep, returned Harry. Harry and John went upstairs toward their bedrooms. Harry went into his room, and John went into his own room. John got in his PJs. John lay down on his bed. He closed his eyes and slept. The next day, John woke up and he went downstairs. Uh, father, can we go to Barnes and Noble to get Dracula an interview with a vampire? He asked. Well, I don't know, his father responded. Please, begged John. Okay, we will go, returned his father. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome, and get dressed. John went upstairs, and he changed himself into his Star Wars t-shirt, and his grey jeans with a black belt. Then John went downstairs. He got his black shoes, he put them on, and he tied his shoelaces. Come on, let's go, said his father. John got up, and he went outside with his father. John and his father went on the bus, and the bus drove off. Dad? Um, when will there be a new Star Wars trilogy? asked John. I don't know, John, his father answered. Dad, when I was watching Dracula, my only issue with it is Keanu Reeves' acting. It's like he doesn't even know what he is doing with his accent. I know, John, he returned, but I still like the film nonetheless, John said. 
The bus stopped near Barnes and Noble, and John and his father got off the bus. They went inside Barnes and Noble, and John is looking for the book, Interview with the Vampire. Then he found it, and he found Bram Stoker's Dracula. His father took the two books to the cashier, and paid for it, for nine sixty-one pounds. Thank you," said the cashier. Chapter two. John and his father went on the bus, and the bus drove off. While the bus was moving, John is looking out the window. Thinking about his brother Harry, and reading his books, the bus stopped, and John and his father went off the bus. They went home, and John went to the sitting room to read his book, Interview with a Vampire. While he was reading his book, Harry had a little cough. <coughs> John faced him and said, "Um, are you okay?" I'm fine," responded Harry. "It's just a little cough, nothing more. I'm fine, really." John continued to read his book. Then he finished interview with the vampire, and he read Bram Stoker's Dracula. After three hours, he finally finished reading Bram Stoker's Dracula. John went to Harry and said, "Harry." I'm just gonna go to the arcade if that's okay with you. Okay, John responded. Harry, but please be careful. All right. Yes, I will try," said John. Then John opened the front door and he went outside. John walked to the arcade, and he went on Dragon's Lair and played it. John tried to beat the game, but he keeps losing. And John's anger is bubbling to the surface, but he tries to control it. And after sixty loses, he finally beaten the game. Then John went on Mortal Kombat, and played it against an NPC enemy. Then he lost, and he played it a second time, and he won. John then went home, and Harry continued coughing. <coughs> John went to the kitchen and poured a cup of water and gave it to Harry. Thank you, John," <coughs> smiled Harry. Then he drank his water. "You're welcome," John said. "Are you okay now?" "Yes, I'm fine." "Thank you," replied Harry. The sky. Grew darker and darker, and John and Harry went up to their own separate bedrooms, and John reads Interview with a Vampire again, and at eleven fifty p.m. John finished his book again and he went to sleep. Chapter three. The next day, John woke up at ten a.m. He went downstairs. And he made himself cereal, which is cornflakes, and he made a cup of coffee for himself. John finished his breakfast, and there was a coughing sound in the living room. <coughs> so John runs into the living room, and Harry is coughing up blood. Harry, it's gonna be okay," said John. Harry lay down on the floor. Still coughing up blood. Hold on, Harry. Okay. Mum, Dad, come down here. His mother and father came downstairs. Yes, John said. His mother. He needs to go to the hospital. Help me lift him up, Mum. John and his mother lifted lifted him up, and they took him to their taxi. Drive, John said, and the taxi drove off. The taxi stopped at the hospital, and John, his father and mother, took Harry with them to the hospital. Hold on, brother, John told him. Everything will be okay. 
the doctor placed Harry on the bed in the hospital room, and Harry kept coughing up blood. Then Harry passed away, and John said nothing but rather stared at him in despair, grief, and sorrow. I'm sorry, the doctor said, and John and Harry's mother is crying on her, on her husband's shoulder. The end.